Proverbs chapter number 29. He that being often reproved, hardened his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed. Now the he, the person, this one, is you, you, you tell him, 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 you keep telling them, and they just don't listen. And it's sorry because you know what? I got no here. This is what God told the prophets to write about for the nation of Israel. He said, "There's your stiff neck. What, what, what's the meaning in that? This verse right here. He kept telling, say, listen, obey my law, serve me." Leave Astra, leave Baal, go into the land that's milk, of, milk and honey, and they wouldn't listen. And they were destroyed. You know, the Jew is in the land, but it's not their land today. And you know, the, the, the most comical, funniest thing is when they're standing before Pilate, we have, we're not under bondage. Yeah, why did you have to bring Jesus to the Roman government if you're not under bondage? Because you are under the Roman law, <laughs> under Pharaoh. They, they get eighth away to the promised land, maybe half away. Well, we like the, the leeks, the melons, and all that. We want to go back where they were killing your babies. And how many were destroyed in the wilderness? And I guarantee you Solomon is thinking about the history of the Jews and looking forward to the Jews. Those Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes never yet, because of envy, never turned to think, hey, maybe Jesus is right. And where are they today? Well, the die-hard ones of envy that Pilate spoke of, they are in hell. They're destroyed. And that without remedy. Now, I'm not an expert on diseases, but I know of a few diseases that once you have it, you can't get rid of it. There are no medicines. There are no cures. You have to live it out and die. And usually it's death by, by excruciating pain. And sometimes maybe isolation. Ebola, that this is going around today. I don't know if it's painful. But I know you die in isolation. Imagine catching something or doing something because your own acts here, verse 1, that nobody can be around you. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. That is a great statement. We don't have a right government, and the people are not rejoicing. And I'm not talking about just President Obama. I'm talking about the whole government in itself, federal and state and municipal. But when the wicked... Beareth rule, the people mourn. That, that's a true statement. So, when we talk about the Antichrist in chapter 28, and he is the wicked. Did you see that? Did you mark your Bibles to the wicked? What will be the main atmosphere of the tribulation period? Mourning. Even if you have the mark. Even if you can get what you, if you want to get. Under the wicked ruler, the tribulation period of seven years will be mourning. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoices his father. Your dad will be happy if you want wisdom. If he's a right dad. When people get upset because you got your daughter standing on the street with Jesus Christ, they're not right when they get upset. Oh, we're going to call the cops on you. They should be happy. 
Wow, look at that. There, there's a clean girl, no cigarettes. She's she's not uh, defiling her body, and she's standing up for the one true God. But he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. Now this is written over 700 years before Luke writes anything about the prodigal son. And maybe Luke, the prodigal son also backs on to Proverbs 29. Where Lord Jesus Christ spoke and the prodigal son can be found in Proverbs 29. So when he tells the story of the prodigal son, and he went off and spent all his money on the harlots and ended up in the pig's pen, where should their minds go on? I heard that somewhere. And you've got to wonder with the word of God that's alive. If that wasn't just taught in the temple, the last Sabbath. How many times have you been in church or you had something where it's some Bible reading or Bible studying or a program or something, a cassette tape, you put it in, and boom, there's the Word of God active in your life right then and there. How many can you, can you just imagine Nicodemus in this temple service had about the Spirit? And about a new birth that is found in the Old Testament scriptures. And then Jesus turns around and says, well, being a master, you don't understand these things? It's scripture with scripture. The king by judgment establishes the land. So what do you do when you don't pass judgment? What is it when you have a, a, a justice system that takes bribes? What is it when you have a justice system based upon uh, sex, color, or creed? What is it when the justice system, you walk in there and you, know, you flip a ring or some kind of secret handshake? That's not establishing a nation. That is tearing down. Establish it is to build and, and build upon, to make more. But he that receiveth gifts, bribery, overthroweth it. What? The establishment of the land. You know why America is breaking down? Because of sin, because of violation of the scriptures. The Bible tells our government you ought not to be doing what you're doing. The Bible proclaims clearly you are not to allow sodomites to marry. You are to treat it as an abominable sin, not praise it and, and give them uh, health care and marital status. The, the Bible says in the New Testament, if a man kills another man, you are to shed that man's blood. You're not to keep him in jail and feed him and take care of him the rest of their life. Listen, I've been in the jail ministry. I have met men that have been let out of jail. I would Listen, if I was in jail for anything, even if I was innocent, and the day came along and said, hey, today's the day you go home. I'd be wanting my family there and love and kiss and hug him and all that. And there are men who are in the prison system. As soon as the day they're out, they're not even out on the street for about two hours. They have been arrested again to be put back in the system. That's not right. The Bible says in the New Testament, Paul writing, A man ought to work. Him that steals, let him steal no longer or more. We don't have proper judgment in this country. And I can go on and on about it. A man that flatters his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. Flattery is an evil motive. He said, well, what's wrong with flattering your neighbor? It's the word and its meaning. It's not, you know... You go over there, you, you know, you're a good neighbor, and I really appreciate, you know, I, 
you respect me and my family and stuff like that is oh you're so, and, and there's a motive there's something to it you want something and you'll be caught in a trap and we discovered this discovered in 28 chapters in 29 we're doing now that you know that evil woman that strange woman with flattery caught the man Flattery is not a tool for a Christian. And yet it's spoken apart in pulpits all across the world. So people will stay and people will give tithes and people will love their preacher. And yet the Bible says as their neighbors are sitting in the pews, the pastor's uh, neighbors... He's putting a net under his feet. He's going to be caught. And he won't be able to go anywhere. In the transgression of an evil man, there is a snare. So when a man transgresses, And not only a man, because I transgress even a, as a Christian. I go things in my life that I shouldn't go. Whether I know or whether I don't know. But of an evil man, there is a snare. When an evil man continues to transgress God, The final result will be a place that he cannot get out of, the lake of fire. Now I'm going to jump over day and age of the world and jump this guy over to the lake of fire. Because when you've lived as long as I have lived, And you know people who, who have lived longer than I have lived. And they can tell you names of people who were wicked and evil and died without any troubles or problems. And yet we don't know, we don't can't imagine what hell would be like outside of Luke Luke 16 see you may be wicked and evil and get away with it on this earth but you ain't gonna get away from it in eternity and we don't see that we just see the man okay there he is in the coffin wow look at all the good stuff he had but do you realize in that coffin that his soul is now in a pit, in a snare that he can never get out of? Because he was evil and he transgressed against God? But the righteous do sing and rejoice because we have a hope. We have a word that tells us what God expects from us. I know what God wants. I know what he says. I know the consequences of sins by reading the Bible. And I rejoice in saying that the fact is that that holy God that made everything loves me. Because I love his son. The righteous consider the cause of the poor. Right? So you've got to, I don't know how to say it, break down the poor. And I don't mean, I'm trying to say is you've got to figure out why are they poor. Are they even poor? That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, listen, there are things, you know, they'll say give toys. 
at Christmas time for, for children to have toys. And I will ask them to their face, well, when you give toys to the parents, do the parents smoke? Do they buy beer? And if I get a yes answer, I say, well, let them get rid of their sin. Let them get rid of their indulgence. And then let them buy their own children their toys. You're not poor if you can afford beer and cigarettes. Why is the guy poor? He's got two jobs and, you know, there was a cancer in, in, in the family or there was this medical thing that had, or the bills are overwhelming. He's poor. What surrounds their poorness? What is their money going to? And does it absolutely necessary need to go to that? I have known Americans have heard their stories. They did not need electricity in their house. Even in the winter. They had a fireplace in the house and they survived and cooked their food and, and by the fireplace. They did not need electricity. It was unneeded. It was completely useless for them. But they had the water, you know, the flush the toilet and, you know, for whatever you, you do with water. But when they looked at it, electricity was not a, a need that they had, and they, they outlived that. They did not need a car. Why are they poor? When you consider the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. They don't want to know. They don't care. And they do their little television thing or they're, you know, we're going to pass a bill. They don't, they're doing it for another cause. They're doing it for another reason. Because they just don't want to know. Because they're wicked. And there's an alternative, alternative motive. Not the heart. Scornful men... Go back to Proverbs chapter 1. Remember the scorner? Now watch this. You ever been door knocking? You ever been on the street preaching? You ever hearing somebody a gospel track? You ever had them scorn you? Scornful men bring a city into a snare. You know, if you're trying to get the gospel out and someone is scorning you, they are doing injustice to the city that you're in. They are preventing the gospel from getting out and maybe turn the gospel away from the people. You imagine if a scorner comes up to you while you're door knocking or on the street preaching and all that, and, and he gives you his wonderful time and to realize when he gets to the great white throne judgment, realize that that time spent was there was somebody waiting to hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ and get saved. Or they heard that scorner rebuking you and the gospel and Jesus Christ, and they would turn somebody who was walking by, turn away from the gospel. You know, this nation letting, letting the atheists stand up and take rule, letting the uh, upstream abominable sinners to stand up and take a stand is ruining the cities of America. I mean, they get upset because of a nativity scene. Come on. You got to be so against God that you, you want to take away a nativity scene. And yet, as a Bible-believing Christian, I'm against the Christmas tree. I think it's a bale bush. You don't see me out there with a crusade to get rid of every tree in people's houses. Now, I will tell a Christian, hey, listen, that's wrong. But that's still your decision. But wise men turn away wrath. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 14 through 18. 
Matthew 23, 37, 38. If you stay firm to the, to the gospel and put up with the scorners and give them the gospel, you may turn the wrath of God, John chapter 3, off a sinner and bring him into an everlasting life. Who cares about the scorner then? And the damage that he's done. He will stand account to the damage that's done. You keep on going no matter how much they scorn. And that one soul gets saved. You got a minimum of one soul that's in heaven. If a wise man, there's a wise man verse 8. Contendeth with the foolish man. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. So if you contend with a atheist. You contend with any man that's been described in these 29 chapters as a foolish man. Whether he rage. Anger. You get into a heated argument. Or laugh. There is no rest. There is no peace. What good is it going to do to argue with the person there on the street? Now, it was a couple of weeks ago that I, I gave a guy time. I will not give him any more time. Now, that he came walking out the last time we were there and had he come to me, I would just politely some way say, no, I, I've given you time. Unless you want to turn to the God of the Bible. See, those two words right there, God and Bible, he would instantly jump on and tag. I'd go, that's it. I'm not going to give you no more time. Somebody comes up to you, well, there is no God. Well, the Bible says there is God. Well, I don't believe that book. Well, then you and I already have faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I don't want to hear that. Okay, then bye-bye. You know, you can sit there and argue it back and forth and people look at you two idiots. Because you will be an idiot. There's got to be a point where you realize, hey, this guy ain't going to change. He ain't and Satan may have just sent him just, just to get you going. He may be wasting your time for somebody else who wouldn't listen. The Bloodthirsty, Chapter 1. Hate the upright. Why? Because they know that what they're going to do is wrong. They know you're not going to do it. You know where we come to a drama in America? Have you realized that these school shootings are during the day? And I believe Proverbs 1 said it's going in, in, in the night. You got bloodthirsty people that are doing their work in the daylight in the school in the mall at an office building there is no conscience for sin there is no regret a guy loses his job, goes into his place of employment, shoots the boss, the secretary, and Fred at the water cooler, and then turns the gun on himself, did what? To relieve the situation. But to just seek his soul. 
since I have been talking about the street ministry or knocking on doors and stuff like that, let me keep it in that content. Your faithful witnessing of what you do for the Lord. I don't care if you made it a pack in your life that every cashier you, you deal with, you're going to give a gospel track. That cashier may be punching out your order and the person behind you, and maybe, <coughs> pardon me, maybe going home planning to kill their spouse or their children or their boss. And you don't even know that. You may be on the street preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And even thinking in your heart, oh, no one. No one in a long time have I seen turn up. You may be knocking on doors because your church does it and you're spreading the gospel. Because it says, you seek the soul. You seek the souls, the eternal souls of people to have them turn to Jesus Christ as their Savior. And event of what you're doing for God may be used by God to prevent a major sin. I have heard a few stories where somebody who, had, who wanted to kill themselves and have somebody come knocking on their door and consistently knocking on the door. And instead of taking their eternal life and waking up in hell, they have now been saved and serving the Lord. I have heard stories of somebody who want, who found out that their, their, their wife was committing adultery, has packed a gun in, in their waist, and stopped at a phone to call somebody, and there's been a gospel track there. And the entire life matters have now changed because of a piece of paper with a gospel on it. Listen, people, what was the Ethiopian eunuch going to do when he went back to Ethiopia? Without that gospel. You ever think of that? And yet the gospel changed his life. And I guarantee he changed the life of other Ethiopians. We need to be faithful to the word of God. Because we don't know what the word of God is going to prevent. We do know it's going to prevent hell if they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The full or excuse me, I guess I'm not wrong. The full utters all his mind, especially when they're drunk. But there are people who just tell you everything they know, which is not much. But a wise man keepeth it, whatever he knows, until afterwards. He thinks first. 12.23, 14.33, and 29.20. He knows what to say and when to say it and prays over it. And if you've done any work for the Lord, you've, you've heard the fool speak all his mind. If a ruler hearkens to lies, perverted Bible, how about that one? His servants are wicked. Why are his servants wicked? I have a note here, John 3.20. I can give you one servant to a ruler. What about Nathan to David? Nathan could have lost his head. You know why the servants are wicked? Because they won't stand up. 
They will stand up to the to the ruler. It doesn't say king. It says the ruler. Hey, you're wrong. Now I have been in churches. I have been guilty of that. And there have been some churches where I go into the past and told them, you know what, you're wrong. And I got their three cents piece, which is worth nothing. They've got people saved. Yeah. And the sewer has water too, so what? John the Baptist stood up to the whole nation. Jesus Christ stood up to the nation. He stood up to Pontius Pilate and he wasn't a king. Paul stood up to churches and said, you're wrong. And he even says in one church, what, have I become your enemy? We can't even walk in a Baptist church today and tell the pastor, hey, that's wrong. Come on, man, wake up. We got things going on in the church today. We put two words with it, and one's a positive and one's a negative, and they don't belong together. And we sit in fear. While the pastor of the church preaches about Laodiceans and how they, you know, they conquer the laity, and the people are in the pulpit afraid to go up to the pastor and say, is that really right? The poor and the deceitful man meet together. The Lord lightens both their eyes. As far as lightning, John 8, 12, John 1, 9, Romans 2, 11. Both their eyes is against Calvin's teaching. That verse is telling you that God will deal with all men. You can put right along with that verse, for God so loved the world. Will he be poor? Ooh, he's poor. I don't want to have no friends with him. Remember, remember what Proverbs said? And the deceitful man. Ew, he eats with publicans and sinners. Ew. Yeah, he went to both. And you know what? Those are the ones that got saved. <laughs> and with that, Acts 10.34. The king that faithfully judges the poor, his throne shall be established forever. Romans 15.26. He judges right, the right motive. And not just because who they are or what they are. It's not race, color, or creed here. And there are a few occasions in the Bible. There was a one woman, uh, she was poor with Elijah's ministry. She went off because of a famine. And when she came back, she came to the king and this is my land. I left because of the famine. And the king looked at the thing. He said, all right, give her her land back. It belongs to her. And the king could have done injustice and given it to somebody else. She left. The rod and reproof giveth wisdom. But a child left to himself... Bringeth shame, bringeth his mother to shame. America has shameful family. And the only way you will see mom and dad on the news is when they can have a lawsuit. That's the only time they take interest in their child. That's a shame.
Well, my Johnny, <coughs> it was brutality. What was Johnny doing there in the first place? What was he doing out that lake? Listen, I don't care how much powder puff they put on you and lipstick they put on you to go on the front of the TV cameras. When the cameras are off, if you got any conscience, <clears throat> they're shame. <clears throat> Excuse me. You ought to be shamed. But as parenting today, there is no shame because there's no parenting. Children are a burden. Some children are, are just a product of, of, of pleasurable activities. <coughs> when the wicked are multiplied, you mean the children that are kept to themselves? I mean, you got a vast population of children that causes their parents shame. And then when they have children, there'll be no shame because they don't know what parenting is. Transgression increases. Why is the generation getting worse than the generation before? And it's worse than the generation before. Improper parenting. Broken churches, broken families. <clears throat> but the righteous shall see their fall. Correct thy son. See, we are still in the same subject here in these verse these these three verses. 15, 16, 17. How do I not make transgression increase? Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest, which is a complete opposite to shame. If you've got a proper child and there's cities out there rioting, you're going to put your head on the pillow and know that you're Johnny. I know he's okay. I know he's if he if he's working at that hour, you know he's he's got enough sense that he's going to go around that. So I don't really need to, to worry. You know, Lord, I'm going to pray for his safety, but I know I brought him up right when you're going to sleep. There are cities in, in turmoil in America today, and there are mothers who can't sleep, wondering what's going to happen to their baby. Let's keep on going. Talking about children. Where there is no vision. Oh, there's a vision in America. It's called television. The people perish. What hope does America have today? They have thrown God out of the schools. They have thrown the Bible out of the, out of the court system. And there are no jobs. And if you're an American citizen, we'll bring other people to steal your jobs. We'll give the jobs to other people. Where is the vision of America? And yet the people will perish. How are they going to perish? For God so loved them. Forget that. Who's going to teach them that? The churches ain't raising their children to, to, to spread the gospel. I have been down here in Daytona Beach since 2011. And the only ones that keep coming to my door is the Jehovah Witnesses. And I have not had a Baptist church come to me with the blood-bought gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ dying for my sins. And you need more than two hands to count the Baptist churches as you go down a straight line to go to where we have a street ministry.
And then you read the little billboard signs in front of the church, and you say, my God, what's going on in that place? What is no vision? No vision of the Lord Jesus Christ coming for his church. Oh, but all the signs now coming out with this Christmas bell worship. And cantanas and, and, and carols and all this other gunk. The vision is that you are to look for the blessed hope and the glorious spirit of our great God and Savior. And if you don't have him as your great God and Savior, you need to be saved. You need to be born again. That's the vision. That one day I'm a saved Christian, that Christ is going to come. And I want to find him. I want him to come and find me faithful. That's my vision. And all the world around me may go to hell, but what's in my house will not. That's the vision. Uh, my vision is to have the Lord Jesus Christ say to me, well done. I will accept well done. Thou good and faithful servant, I have not been faithful to the Lord. Just to hear the Lord Jesus tell me well done would be, because I have not been faithful. You want to go to the mall that's right behind us, where Santa Claus is, and stop and ask him what the religion preference is and find how many Baptists will be there on Santa's knee? And how many of those families, yeah, I'm Baptist, born to a Baptist church, go every Sunday morning, and find the pastor or the deacon's families? We'll send our children to go look for Easter eggs in the church probably, but we won't take them to go knocking on doors and show them how to do that. Oh, but we got television. I have been in houses where there are more televisions than people and then Bibles. Let me give let me give you an example. Let's see. Three people in the house. One, two, three, four televisions. And three Bibles, and one of them was in the back seat of the car when they went to church Sunday. And I was biblically wrong. I was the fruitcake to have a Bible message on my answering machine, so when people called me to leave a message, they would get the gospel. And when they died, they were in a, a, a perverted conformance of the world church. What's going on? Tell me on Black Friday how many people fought to get a King James Bible. How many people at the police stations with a black guy in handcuffs and stand before the court and say, Your Honor, I'm guilty. And what were you trying to steal, sir? I was trying to steal a King James Bible because I couldn't get one because I want to know about what God has to say about my life. No, I was going to get that HDTV. I wanted three of them. I had two underneath my arm, I was about to walk out with one between my legs, but that woman grabbed it. So I punched her. I wanted that cell phone. So what? So you can get the King James Bible app, or whatever they call that stuff? Well, I have to I have to use my cell phone to, You already had a cell phone, you're fighting somebody to get another one? We were watching the TV the other night, we were somewhere, and you know, most of the time it's stupid commercials. They're absolutely stupid. 
And then they show you drugs that you can get from your doctor, and they got to have another advertisement just so all the side effects of that drug to get more drugs for the side effects of those drugs to get side effects for them drugs to get more drugs to have more side effects so you, you be completely stoned out of your mind with drugs and side effects. And there's no vision. Oh, in order to save my memory verse, I, I, I have to get a, a, a Tootsie Roll. Hey, kid! Hey, teacher! Why don't you say your memory verse? Because you want to do it for the Lord and please the Lord and not to get a dumb, dumb lollipop. Why don't we just do things for the Lord without cupcakes and, and, and drinks and, and, and hoopla and balloons and gula? Why can't we just do it for the Lord? Why do we got to teach these children in order to do something for God? They they, they got to get something. But for the government, if you want something for food, we'll just give it to you for free. But for Jesus, you got to have something. But for food, you can just stay home and wait for your little plastic car to get relit up and go down to the... If America had a shortage of food overnight, and what was on the store shelves is the last of the food you're ever going to see, would there be a march to the grocery stores or would there be a march to God? And then the food that would have been gotten would be given thanks to God or what? Let's go back to verse 15. I'll close this with talking about children. The rod and reproof giveth wisdom. You want your children to be wise, you got to correct them. You don't send them to the correction. How do you send your child to the correction? Let them go do whatever they want to do, and they'll end up in jail. You just let your child be, and you don't tell them nothing, and they'll end up in correction. You know how you keep them out of jail? You correct them as a child. You tell them, you pull your pants down, I want to see your underwear. And then you provide to the rear, child rearing, the board of education. When I was in school, they didn't paddle us. But when I was sent to uh, principal, what is his name? I can't remember his name now. When I was sent to the principal's office in, in grammar school, I remember his name right. You know what he had above his desk on the wall? He had a big paddle and said right on it, the Board of Education. You look at that thing, right, and you look at him, and you look at him, and you look at that back and forth. And you were afraid if he was going to pull that down and use it. My mom wasn't saved then, but I had a godly mother that when I came home, she applied the, the Board of Education on my butt. My mom, my mom used a yardstick on my butt. I went more yards than Joe Montana. You know how I ended up in the Correctional Institute? I ended up going to the Correctional Institute for four years with the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I got to go home that night. And the Lord has allowed me to use and help men in the, in the prison. But a child left to himself bringing his mother to shame. Just leave the child alone, and he'll bring you shame. And if it does not bring the mother shame, then she's no kind of mother. See, not all mothers are mothers. Some children are produced by fun. Some children are produced so the government will give you more. And don't tell me, because I know two women right now would say, right to your face, they'll have another baby to get more money.
Because I've heard him say it. And there was no shame for that mother to turn her child over to prostitution. And they wonder why the state took the child away. When the wicked are multiplied, why are they multiplied? Because you're not raising the child right, you're not correcting them when they're young. I want to be my child's friend. Causes shame. When the wicked are multiplied, and transgression increases. You know why it's going to get worse in America? Because the churches have gotten worse. You know why it's getting, going to get total co collapse of America? Because the family has collapsed. We have seen Christian families in churches. And we've been down here at the Santa Parade. At the Halloween Festival. Going to the movies. But did we see him Sunday night at church when we're there? Did we see him Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night at church there? No. But the righteous shall see their fall. The nation's going to fall, but the Christians won't. Correct thy son. And he shall give thee rest. You know, even if your child has been sent over Afghanistan or Iraq, even though he, chances are he, he's going to get shot, you still will sleep on your pillow knowing that child is going to do right. He's not going to get in trouble. That he may be even witnessing. You know, if you don't correct your child, that child may be in a battlefield. It won't be Iraq and Afghanistan. It'll be in a city somewhere with gangs or the school. You send your child off. What's going to happen to him? Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. You want a child delight? You don't be their friend. You raise him up where the Lord told you to raise him up. And where there is no vision, get rid of the television. Teach his children about Jesus and his coming. You want your children to be saved? You better get rid of that Christmas music and bring the Christian music. You better watch out. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Jesus Christ is coming, my dear. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you're asleep. Proverbs says he sees you, whether you do evil or good. So, you better not pout, you better not cry, I'm telling you why. Jesus is coming for us. Now, son or daughter, can you show me the Bible where it says Jesus is going to come? Can they open up the Thessalonians and show you? Hmm? Can they? Can they tell you all the players on that sports team that you like? But can they tell you all the 12 apostles of the Lamb? Can they tell you the 12 tribes of Israel? Where there's no vision. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Where there's no vision, the people read it. What more can it be to die and go off in a lake of fire when you sat under a preacher? 
You want to talk about shame? Can you imagine being a preacher of a church and God allows you to be judged last as he as he watches as you watch as a preacher all your congregation get kicked into the lake of fire then you go after them? Whether you serve water, milk or cookies or works or magazines, whatever you do, but the blood in the Bible. But he that keepeth the law. Again, we're under Old Testament, but hey, what's wrong with us keeping the law? Not for salvation, but to live right. Nothing wrong with thou shalt not commit adultery. There's nothing wrong with thou shalt not murder. There's nothing wrong with thou shalt not covet. Of course, you get ready to covet if you get ready, you know, if you have the television. Happy is he. What's it say over here we read tonight? Uh, where is it? Real quick, we'll be done. Verse 6. In the transgression of an evil man there is a snare, but the righteous does sing and rejoice. Better train your children up. You better raise them properly because guess what? They're, they may have children one day. And the result of the failure of the children today is because their parents didn't raise them right. Somebody said I'd rather have a friend of a child than a child. 